Well, welcome everybody to our third stop on the Downtown History and Beer Tour. We're here at Bread, Milk and Honey, an excellent location in our downtown to come and you'll meet with friends, get yourself a nice coffee during the day or have a nice little bite to eat. But they also stay open later at night where you can have charcuterie, you can have wine, you can have, you have fermented barleys, libations, and you can enjoy yourself. Live music, it's an excellent venue in our downtown. And today we've got a peach and apricot Hefeweizen from Russell Brewing Company from Surrey, British Columbia. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my own event down Absolutely here in Festival right. Square, Oktoberfest YQL coming up this September 9th and 10th, tickets are on sale where we serve a ton of delicious Hefeweizens at our event. And this is a perfect transition. The brewer says, a marriage between apricot and peaches. Great segue, Roy. <laughs> and a Hefeweizen, for those of you who don't know, Hefe is German for yeast and Weizen is white. So it's a white, uh, a yeasty white uh, wheat beer. And so, um, it's, it's actually a little bit stronger than, than a typical wheat beer or half a bites in That's right. You know, they're usually around 4.5% right. to 5%. <laughs> this is, what do we have, about 6.5%, 6. 6. I think. And the other thing <laughs> with, with these is that, you know, it's generally a, a softer, you know, um, yeah. softer flavor. There, there should be, uh, aroma-wise, a lot more of the peach and apricot yes. esters coming through, and those should come through in the flavor as well. And they really do. Like, when you smell it, you know, take that moment to just shake it around, get the aroma out. But when you smell it, you can see the infusion or the marriage between apricot and peaches. I think it's just a brilliant balance. It is. As well, as George mentioned, you can see it's quite cloudy. That's quite normal for a Hefeweizen, especially with the yeast yes. uh, addition to it. And I think, and we got good carbonation, good head. Oh yes. Yeah. Good. yeah. You'll find this um, more of a sipping type of beer because it is a little Ooh, bit stronger yeah. and you want to enjoy that flavor just a little bit more. Just, you know, get that, that peach and apricot flavor rolling around with, you know, the wheat and, and all the other ingredients that are typical of a, a yeah. half a bite. I think traditionally for those that are like, hey, you know, beer's not really my thing or I haven't found the style of beer that works for me. I think this balance of peach and apricot, that fruity, flavor to the beer yeah. uh, really makes it kind of an enjoyable beer for all it is. you know if you can of course if you can indulge in, in these beers of course if you have gluten intolerance you can get gluten-free beer now uh, that's also there for you available for you but this is a great balance well and it's also a good transition if, if people like sours because of the, you know there's a lot of fruity sour beers and things like that too so this is this is a good transition for that well. that's awesome so final opinion George uh, that's a nice summer beer uh, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it so Give it a try. Yeah, let's give it a try and enjoy. And we'll see you at our final stop on the tour. And we'll see you, we'll see you there. Cheers. Knights of Pythias Building, International Harvester Building, the Wallace Block. These are just some of the names by which this building has been known. And they all give a sense of the history. The Knights of Pythias were an early fraternal organization dedicated to fostering peace and friendship. And they were actually the ones who constructed this building in 1910. The Knights of Pythias and other organizations and even churches such as the Loyal Order of Moose, the Canadian Order of Foresters, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and the Canadian Order of Woodsmen all use this building. So you would have been down here for church services, but dances and lectures and all sorts of things were held upstairs in this building. The main floor was always commercial use, and the first organization that was actually on the main floor was the International Harvester Company, a farm machinery company. So you know a building has been really well constructed when there's been tractors inside it and the building is still standing from 1910. Now International Harvester was only in the building for a couple of years and then constructed their own building up on Stafford Drive North in Lethbridge. In time, Robert Wallace and other investors purchased this building and it became known as the Wallace Block. Wallace was involved in ranching and in the wholesale tobacco industry both here in Calgary and in Lethbridge. And so that's where the Wallace name comes from. Now many other businesses have operated in this and I'm only going to give you a few, but the Bernadette Fisher Dance Company, the Wallace and Peacock Limited, Kitson Wholesale, Cobbler Shoe Store, Kids Town Clothing Store, Independent Biscuit Co. are just some of the, build, uh, some of the businesses that have been located here in what is now the Wallace Block.